Yeah, first I want to start and uh, acknowledge the, the very tragic passing of Adam Zimmer. Uh, Adam was uh, somebody that I got to work with um, together in Minnesota. Uh, just a tragic, tragic uh, situation there. So my thoughts, my prayers are with the Zimmer family. Um, it's just, uh, it's, it's tough. Uh, really, really good person, really good coach. So just uh, tough news uh, for everybody. Um, <clears throat> with the game, you know, I, we talked about it last night, and, and I, or I guess it was maybe close to this morning, but um, really some great efforts uh, by the guys and, and emphasis on the word effort. I thought the guys were flying around, playing for each other, picking each other up off the ground, pushing each other. Um, and, and, and it was just, it, it was a, 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 a night where kind of offense, defense, special teams playing complimentary ball at times. So never perfect, uh, always things that, that I want to do better, that we want to do better. Um, but, and we'll have those opportunities. So we're meeting on it right now. Players are in their meetings right now, wrapping up with their coaches and then they'll uh, go for the fresh, make sure that they recharge uh, and, and get ready for uh, the next week. But got to treat this bye week um, the right way. And that is, you know, making sure that we're taking care of each other, taking care of our bodies, those type of things, but uh, really have to recharge. And with that, I will take any questions. Thank you, Coach. The first one will be from Tom Withers. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Coach. First of all, very sorry for your loss. That's, it's terrible. Um, hey, as you guys try to get to the other side of hard, as been has been mentioned a few times, Jacoby last night was talking about the play a few weeks ago where he made the bad decision against the Chargers and – Last night in a similar spot, he did the uh, he did the right thing, uh, maybe other than extending the ball at the goal line. Um, how indicative of that, Kevin, is just your team as a whole that guys are kind of cleaning up their mistakes and and learning and and not making them again. Yeah, I think you're right, Tom. I think these games are, are one game seasons, as you know, but you also. Uh, you're trying to get better. You're, you're making mistakes so that you can correct them and, and not make them the, the next time. And and the season uh, has its ups, has its downs. We, we get all that, uh, but but we are so focused uh, on the moment. And last night it was I, I saw our team very very focused in the moment, making sure that uh, we we're going to do anything in our power to come away with victory. And that's really that has to be your mindset every game. Uh, and, and that's that's what the NFL requires. If I could sneak in a quick injury update, anything new on Denzel? And then what about um, David, Wyatt, and Jeremiah in terms of them coming back out off the break? Yeah, nothing uh, new to add with Denzel. And all those guys, I would tell you, are progressing. Uh, they're, they're all heading in the right direction. Uh, again, this bye week is helpful that they can uh, you know, use these extra days, but, but all progressing. Uh, and and I, I'm hopeful on those guys. Thank you, Tom. Next up is Mary Kay Cabot. Uh, yeah, Kevin, even in seeing like the trade of Chase Claypool today and, you know, and what he got in ex and what they got in exchange for, for Chase, um, just wanted to ask you again, a little bit of a follow-up on Amari Cooper and what has he meant to you guys and how fortunate were you uh, to be able to land him the, the way that you did and, and what he's been able to contribute? Yeah, I, I can't speak to that I'm not aware of that one, uh, Mary Kay. I just got out of a meeting, so I'm sure you guys know what's going on around the league. But uh, for us, you know, Coop, he's a big part of what we do. And, and I think he's a big part of what we do on the field. He's a big part of who we are um, in this building, on the practice field. Uh, I just – I enjoy watching Amari work. I enjoy watching him and the quarterbacks work together and rhythm up and talk about different routes. And uh, he's a consummate professional. Um, and, and he's really he, he's a talented football player uh, for his size, the, the way he's able to come in and out of breaks. He wins downfield, can obviously win at the line of scrimmage, tracks the ball well. So, uh, you know, I, I really uh, great player. I think that's the obvious part. Um, but he's a really, really, really good pro. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Kay. Let's go to Scott Patrick. Hey, Kevin, going back to Tom saying that Jacoby flashed back to that Chargers interception as he's scrambling, does it amaze you at all that that would flash to his head or that it even can when things are moving so fast during a game? Uh, no, I think we all have scars. <laughs> you know, I think we all have those flashes. It was in the same end zone, you know, it was in the same end of the building. So I think all of us, you know, I, I call plays 
thinking about a play from the previous week and, and two, and sometimes, you know, you got to let that stuff go as we talk about, but um, it's, all of these moments shape us good and bad. I mean, we all take those plays with us. And how impressive has his toughness been from a resilient standpoint, but and physically, I mean, he took some hits yesterday and he keeps getting up and playing. Yeah. He took a shot to the throat there. Um, and uh, yeah, he, he's a big man. Uh, in the NFL, you know, you, you're playing that position. You got a lot of guys closing in on you, but he uh, and all the quarterback sneaks. I mean, the, the, those are shots on the body and, and those type of things. But but he takes care of his body and uh, he, he's always going to give this team everything he has. Thank you, Scott. Daryl Ryder, go ahead. Yeah, Kevin, uh, with the trade deadline about 85 minutes away or so here, um, are you expecting anything to happen? Are you looking uh, or hoping that Andrew Barry does something? And does the result of last night's game change the the approach or the thinking? I just got out of meetings, so uh, I don't know. I haven't seen Andrew uh, in the last couple hours. Uh, it doesn't change my thinking, uh, you know, focused on what's in front of us. And, and you'll guys get – you guys will get a chance to talk to Andrew later in the week. I'm sure you can ask him, but for us, it's just what we uh, focus on what we can control. And, you know, with last night's game, the, the, the you talk constantly about stacking games and uh, the defense seems to have stacked a couple of games here going into the bye. Um, do you feel like that that side of the ball has maybe found something similar to what they did last year down the stretch? Yeah. I don't know that I would compare it to last year, Daryl. I just think, you know, you go into these games and you're facing such unique attacks week in and week out. Think about it, you're going to face Baltimore and that presents all sorts of challenges. You're facing uh, Cincinnati and that faces, and then you've got different challenges. So it's just a reminder that in the NFL, as you put game plans together and, and you try to play good defense, uh, you have different challenges each week. And, and I think the guys understand that. Um, we played really good defensive football last night. I mean, just how we played early in that game, getting the takeaway and then forcing them to punt after we missed a field goal, forcing them to punt uh, after we throw the interception. Uh, us playing good defense early, I think, really set the tone for that game because if we don't play good early, uh, they're able to put points on the board. So, um, it, of course, you always want to build on on those type of things. Um, but it's it's a week to week basis, and we got to make sure that we when we after we get back out, out of this by we put together a plan for Miami. That's really where our focus will be. Thanks, Daryl. Fred Greetham is next. Hey, coach. Going on what Daryl just asked, as far as you stress the takeaways, and although you weren't able to put points on the board from them, it took points off the board potentially for Cincinnati. They they were driving. They were in your territory. Can you just talk about that? Make such a big difference and how maybe you know you can continue to keep that momentum going in that area. No doubt. I mean, it's something we talk about, Fred. It's something we coach. Uh, we emphasize. Felt like there would be some opportunities for tip balls uh, last night, and sure enough, shows up on the first drive. So Miles gets his hand on it. AJ makes a great play, uh, and, and we come away with no points, like you mentioned, with the missed field goal. Uh, we were able to turn, I think, the the next fumble into eight points. So. Focus is, is going to be important uh, whenever we get those takeaways to to come away with points. But it's it's the best stat there is in, in this team game is that turnover margin. So it's something that we'll always be focused on. Thank you, Fred. Matt Fontana, go ahead. Yeah, Kevin, you mentioned about the trade deadline today. Is it all uneasy to kind of go through the day like wondering if so? I mean, obviously, and we know you talked to, to Andrew and everything, but is there any uneasiness to a day like today? Not for me. You know, I, I get it, you know, I, but we just got to do our job. And then the self scout this week that, you know, you do in a lot of the, the team, there are a lot of teams. do. Is there something specific that you get really excited about to, to really dive into or take a look at, or is it just top to bottom taking a well, look at everything? Yeah, I think you, you do self scout every week. You know, you're trying to keep tabs of where you are week to week. You don't want to wait four weeks and then learn something that could have helped you a few weeks previous. So you're constantly doing it. I think, Now's a great time, though, where we've it's a big sample size where we are this many games into it. So I do think you can glean some things. And I think the most important thing is what do we do well? What do we not do well? And you got to have honest conversations with yourself and with your coaches about those type of things. Uh, and then, you know, make appropriate decisions based on that information. So if you got to do 
let's do a lot more of this. And hey, this isn't working. It draws up on the board. It looks nice, but it's not working. So let, let's move in a different direction. Thank you, Matt. Let's go back to Mary Kay Cabot. Uh, yeah, a follow-up question on, on Jacoby. He was talking about how the game has slowed down for him so much. And I'm just wondering, uh, you know, have, have you sensed that? Have, have you seen that in him, that he's playing some really smart football? And if so, is that really helping you in terms of, you know, game planning and, and what he's seeing out there? Yeah, I, I can't speak to it slowing down for him, Mary Kay, but I, I would tell you just as a veteran, he's seen a lot of defense. So it feels like week in and week out, you go up against a certain scheme. He's played that scheme or he played a, a descendant of that scheme recently. So he, he knows what the rules are for their coverages and those type of things. So, and he's a big player. You see him standing in that pocket. Uh, and I thought the guys, the protection was outstanding, but you see him in there surveying the entire field, uh, making throws to all areas of the field. So I, I just think he does see it clearly. I think that's one of his strengths. Um, and I think in terms of it slowing down, I just think that's preparation. I, re I really do. He works very hard uh, to get ready for these games and, and what he does in the meeting room, what he does on the practice field to make sure that he's getting himself ready uh, to go perform uh, in these games. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Kay. Scott Patrick, you're up. Hey, Kevin, after the game, you mentioned Sione being all over the place. Um, how well, just overall, how well has he been playing? And what's he shown you being in a bigger role than he's had in the past? Yeah, he's done a really nice job, Scott. You know, he's in the past just he's been our base linebacker and then not in there in some of the sub packages. And but he's always ready to go uh, the moment we would need him. So it is an increased role and and he's doing his job. I think that's where it always starts. He's doing his job. He's where he's supposed to be. And then he's tackling well. Uh, there were a bunch of moments where they were checking the ball down uh, to their running backs and, and he was right in position, got him on the ground. A, a bunch of the guys, John Johnson had a couple of real nice open field tackles. So th that was a big part of it. I, I did think, you know, that was one, probably our best tackling game of the season. Um, and Sione played a huge role in that. And, you know, I know you're one week at a time, but can you kind of quantify just how different it feels going into the bye week, coming off a win, especially one that stops a four game losing streak? Quantify it. Yeah. Or, I don't know. Explain it. How does it feel? <laughs> The difference in the building today, you know, if you had five losses uh, in the bye week. Yeah, no, I, I'm, yeah, it's, 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 listen, you're battling, as you know, these are, uh, nobody likes the feeling when you lose. Um, and I can tell you the locker room after you win, all, all those high fives, all, all that, that goodwill uh, is just, it's, it's uh, deposits of goodwill uh, after those wins. So uh, you enjoy them. Um, but what you can't do is you can't lose sight of what, causes that those wins how you get those results and I think it just goes back to how we prepare how we how we handle our work week um so yes uh feels better today thanks Scott we'll go to Tom Withers and we'll close with Tony Grossi and Mary Kay Cabot hey Kevin I wanted to ask you about the tackling um do you guys do a statistical breakdown on that in terms of and I know it's like when you see the eye test and guys are wrapped right. what have you but yards after catch things like that do you we, yeah we track our tackles and missed tackles. I know PFF puts out tackling uh, statistics week in and week out as well. And and not to nitpick, but Kate had another long one blocked last night. Do you guys have a, pro a protection problem or a trajectory problem? Uh, you know, we just got to work at it, Tom. Uh, obviously, I thought that one came out low. Um, he crushed the one at the end of the half. So we'll, we'll keep working. Um, he's, he's a young man. He's going to continue to get better at his craft. And we do have to protect. Uh, uh, obviously, it, it goes hand in hand. Thank you, Tom. Tony, go ahead. Hope you could hear me. I got you. Um, Kevin, two, two quick ones. Number one, uh, I don't think you targeted a tight end yesterday. It's got to be one of the most unusual games you've been involved with in that respect. Can you, re can you remember the last time uh, tight end didn't play a role in the passing game as much? Uh, yeah, that, I during... think – no, you're right, Tony. That That's unusual for us. Now, they played a big role in the game. Uh, you know, Harrison, right. Merrow – Mike Dunn, James Hudson, uh, watched some of the things they did in the run game, watched some of the things they did in protection. Uh, so they played a huge role. Uh, you don't go into the games thinking you're not going to target those guys in the pass game. It's just how it kind of shook out. Um, but they were a big part of why we were able to do what we did last night. And the extra use of the offensive linemen, uh, 
can't imagine too many teams practice against that. <laughs> you know, and you did it more than just a couple times. Uh, do you consider that an edge when you have something that most teams don't do? Yeah, it could be. I, I think there's there's always that element, Tony, where you're trying to do give the defense something they haven't seen or make them prepare for something. So there, there's there's a, a always will be a package of plays that we can run out of those sets. I can tell you the entire offense is very excited when uh, to watch those plays when Drew Forbes is at fullback and James Hudson's at the wing tight end and Mike Dunn's out there. It's uh, it is unique. Uh, they enjoy it. I hope hopefully they just got fined for me saying their names, but um, it was a. Uh, it gave our players a lot of energy. Just watch James Hudson run, running off the field after that two point conversion uh, really goes to show you how much those guys love competing uh, and love to play that physical brand of football. And we'll close with Mary Kay. Uh, yeah, Kevin, you said you've been in meetings, so maybe you're not up to speed on every single thing yet, but uh, it looks like the Dolphins probably gave you guys a little something else to think about. Uh, when you're going to be heading into your next game against them by acquiring Bradley Chubb. So I'm just wondering, um, you know, what would be your initial reaction to that? And are you guys as a coaching staff starting your preparations for Miami? And do you now have a little something more to to work on with him? Yeah, I haven't started yet on Miami, but I'll, I'll be sure to at, we'll look at him and, uh, you know, a great player, I, I, you know, but we'll, we'll get we'll get to Miami. I think part of the bye week, is you, you really do have to get to know yourself first. You got to really understand what we're good at, what we're not so good at. Uh, and then we will use some extra time on Miami. And it's a really good football team. They're very, very well coached. I know a few of their coaches, um, they're explosive. Uh, so we will definitely have our work cut out for us um, when we head down there.